Welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to build three-dimensional lines and we'll simulate a power line transmission where we have four towers. So here's our first tower and the elevation at this location is 70 meters above sea level. And then our second tower, the elevation is 70 meters above sea level. And then here's the line from the top of the tower to the top of the tower, and each tower is 30 meters high. And then we'll go up a slope to 120 meters, and then we'll connect a line from the top of this tower to the top of this tower, and then we'll go up a slope to 170 meters, and we'll connect from the top of the tower to the top of the tower. So when we're all done, we would like to know what is the total length of electric line we need to connect between these towers. So let's start with our four test points that we created using the Create Fishnet tool. And we'll label our four points. So under Labels, we'll label them using the object ID. So here we have point one, two, three, and four. And then we'll add a field to our points, base elevation. So that will be the elevation at each location on the ground. So our point one will be elevation 70 meters above sea level. The next point, 70 meters above sea level. So here we're on a floodplain at 70 meters above sea level. And then we're going to climb a gradient to our next point, which is 120 meters above sea level. And then our final point will be 170 meters above sea level. So the next step is we'll connect the dots running the tool points to line. So we'll make a line between 1, 2, 3, and 4. Input is our test points. And our output will be one line that will connect the dots. So here's our one line that connected the dots. And we could check by opening the attribute table. So it is just one line. So our next step is we'll create three lines, the line going from tower one to tower two, the line going from tower th two to tower three, et cetera. We can do that using the tool split line at vertices. We'll split our line and I named the output three lines. And then if we look at our attribute table for our three lines, we do and have three lines, our first line, our second line, our third line. Our next step is to establish what is the elevation of the line at the start of the line and the end of the line. Our tower has a base elevation of 70 meters and each tower is 30 meters high. If we go up this tower from 70 meters, climb it 30 meters, the elevation will be 100. And then the same thing with this tower, the elevation at the top of the tower will be 100 a line at the top of this tower 100 meters above sea level, top of this tower 100 meters above sea level. We need to add those as fields in our three line. Our first line, the top of the tower connecting the, with a cable will be a start elevation of 100 and end elevation of 100. So we can use the field calculator to fill in those values. So our next line, the top of the tower will be an elevation of 100, and then 30 meters high, it'll go up to 150. Our end elevation in this example will be 150, and the starting elevation at the top of this tower is 100 meters. So each tower is 30 meters tall, so we'll go from 150 meters at this tower to 200 meters at the top of this tower. Now we can create a three-dimensional line using the starting elevation of the line and the ending elevation of the line. Height field is the starting elevation, and then the two height field is the ending elevation. And then I name my output electric lines, which will be at the top of these towers. Let's add Z information to double check to make sure we have the correct values that we want. We really want the length in three dimensions of our electric lines, but as a check, what's the minimum elevation and the maximum elevation 
of these electric lines and the vertex count. In this example, if we were not accounting for elevation and we just had the two-dimensional length, we would have to order, we would order 34 meters of electric line. But since we have a change in elevation, we calculate what is the length in three dimensions, and that would be 113 meters of wire required to connect at the top of the towers. So then we could do the same thing with our test points. We can convert these into 3D points using the base elevation. I'll output it naming it towers, and we'll use the base elevation field to determine Z value for each point. Okay, so now we could visualize our towers and electric lines in ArcScene to see them in three dimensions. So start programs, ArcGIS, and then select ArcScene. Add our electric lines and our towers into an ArcScene. And then scene properties, calculate vertical exaggeration, and let's make it a little more 0.1. So here we have, we'll make our towers a little larger. So let's make it 10 point. So here we have our towers and the first two towers are on the floodplain. So the electric line is horizontal. And then the next tower, we go up in elevation. So this is 30 meters. And then the next tower, it's base, we go up in elevation, so this is 30 meters. What we want to do is extrude our towers to show that 30 meter from the base of the tower to the top of the tower. So if we right mouse click and go to properties on our towers, under extrusion, extrude. So extrude every point by 30 meters. So that visually shows us the extrusion of these points. And then what we want to do is we'll convert these extruded points into 3D lines. So to do that, we'll use the tool Layer 3D to Feature class. So take our towers that are now extruded, and each tower will now become a 3D line. So I could remove my original towers. Now I have the towers symbolized as a 3D line. So let's make them brown, and let's make them a width of four. Here are my towers now as 3D lines, and then here are my electric lines on top of the towers. So that's how we can easily create 3D lines to estimate, for example, how many meters of electric line we would need in a tower application or in a mining application, you might be mine shafts as 3D lines. Okay, so in our next video session, we'll teach you about 3D polygons.